Well, hello there and welcome to the Everybody's a Sagittarius, including you video for 2019. Y'all, I film these videos every single season because each year, even though it's the same sign, you know, we had Sagittarius 2019, 2018, 2017, so on down the line. But every single year brings new wisdom, new insight, and things that are even specific to um, this particular year. And so everybody's a Sagittarius, including you, um, is for everybody, no matter what sign you are. I don't care if you're a Scorpio, if you're an Aquarius, if you're a Capricorn, it really doesn't matter. Um, everybody is in Sagittarius season, so we are all learning the lessons that Sagittarius has for us this year. So this is what you can expect to learn in this video. Three very quick things. The first is what is Sagittarius and how does it show up in all of our lives? The second one is the oracle reason, uh, reading for the season. Like I will pull an oracle card to give some wisdom and guidance for all of us uh, during Sagittarius season. And then the third, y'all know how I do, I will go through all of the signs from A to P, Aries to Pisces, and tell you each what you need to know. So if you're an Aries, what do you need to know during Sagittarius season? If you are a Pisces, what do you need to know during Sagittarius season? So we are going to go through those three things um, in this video. So before we get started, I will just give a couple of very quick announcements. Um, every Sunday, I, I post a pick a card reading, which gives some wisdom and insight and guidance um, for the week ahead. Uh, what you need to know and basically in the pick a card you pick a card and I give you uh, the results and you can look on my YouTube channel and I um, have several other videos um, up there now if you don't know what it's about you can check it out and so you can see what I do so that uh, every Sunday the pick a card reading becomes available and so I highly encourage you to participate in that because every week that you actually comment your card selection will you do that by that Monday after I post it um, your name goes in the hat to win the giveaway for that month and so then at the end of the month I announce the winner and um, and so you're kind of playing along with the pick a card reading so that's every Sunday secondly get my book y'all the magic of self-love um, as I'm filming this I actually have some uh, Black Friday specials going on and I don't know when you're watching this during Sagittarius season so you might be watching this long after that's gone but I always have um, the my book the magic of self-love and also my readings um, you can always book those and you can always purchase the magic of self-love but when you click the link below um, for my products and services you will also see like if I have any type of special going on at the time so make sure that you check the description box down below and and click on that link there and then also for those of you who want to support this channel I greatly appreciate um, your love offerings no donation is too small or too big but you can do that um, I have links for that down below as well if you want to give what I call a love offering all right so thank you to everyone who has given a love offering who is a uh, book service with services with me who's purchased the book or if you just tune in and you just you know getting a feel of what I do I appreciate you as well all right so let's go ahead and get into it Sagittarius 2019 Oh, y'all, this Sagittarius season comes like, is almost like a breath of fresh air because it comes at the end of quite a challenging Mercury retrograde period <laughs> that we experienced in the sign of Scorpio. And it also comes at a um, very... Um, for a lot of people, 2019 in general was a very challenging year. So um, Sagittarius season being, you know, the sign that takes us from the end of November to to the end of December almost, um, <clears throat> is almost like a breath of fresh air this year because that Mercury retrograde, if you see me looking down, it's only because I have notes, so I'll stay on point. But um uh, I have here that Scorpio removed that dead weight. You know, there was a lot of things, a lot of challenges that many of us had to face, a lot of dead weight that we had to learn to let go. We had to get in tune with our deepest, most intimate selves. Um, yeah, I said, I wrote here that it helped us to recognize our core desires and it brought us to 
to our knees in vulnerability, right? And so that was very, very challenging. And for those of you who don't know what Mercury retrograde is, I think I still have some videos up about it. Um, but basically when we went through this Mercury retrograde period, that time period puts a lot of challenges and obstacles on our paths, just so we can see the areas of our lives that we need to heal, that we need to restore, um, the parts of ourselves that we don't want to face, the habits that keep us in a pattern of uh, a, a cycle or a pattern of um, of life that is that's not beneficial, that keeps us from coming up. And so the Mercury retrograde period kind of highlights all of that, like blah like all at once you know and um so it was very 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 challenging for so many people um this past mercury retrograde so as soon as we came out of scorpio season which already is a sign that is intense and deep and and dark and, and forces us to face our innermost deepest most darkest selves and now we have entered into sagittarius season which um <laughs> You know, Sagittarius is a fire sign, so it comes with its own um, kind of in-your-face heat in a kind of way, too. But Sagittarius, by nature, with it following Scorpio, is like, okay, we've done the deep, dark, dirty work. We put our hands in the ground to pull out, you know, the innermost, you know, intimate things that we either do want to face or don't want to face, right? And now let's move forward. And, and I'll probably mention this again later on, but if you know, if you look at the symbol for Sagittarius, it's a um, centaur and he's holding an arrow that's shooting um, into the future, basically, that's shooting ahead. So Sagittarius energy in itself is very aspirational. It's about, you know, coming out of the darkness, coming out of, you know, or not even the darkness, but just coming out of where you've been. And it's like almost like renewal and, re and rebirth. So with us this year, 2019, having a very challenging Mercury retrograde, um, this Sagittarius season is actually, actually kind of like a very um, breath of fresh air for a lot of people. And so... Um, uh, what I write here, Sagittarius is, is here making us feel renewed and like there is no height to which we can't ascend. But even this has its own challenges, right? And so um, let's go into what that means or why, why I even wrote why um, Sagittarius season even comes with its own um, challenges. It's so funny. I saw this post recently that said, uh, welcome to... Welcome Sagittarist, Sagittarist. So it was like, you know, because Sagittarius energy, and if you know any Sagittarian people, you know, can very can be very open and thoughtful and tolerant and expansive and wanting to learn and open to other cultures and open to just so much. But sometimes that energy can also, on its lower end, be depicted as intolerant and blunt and abrupt and can be kind of harsh in some ways. And if you are close to a Sagittarius, you may have seen that or experienced that um, at certain times. I, I actually like the Sagittarius energy. And I know, even though I'm a sun sign Virgo, you know, I like the uh, Sagittarius energy. And I know uh, quite a few... Sagittarians um that I'm friends with or close to you know or maybe have just known for a long period of time and so I've seen the highs and the lows and you know what I always tell you you know all signs have their higher energy and lower energy because sometimes we get you know so attached to our signs we're like oh Virgos we just we don't do no wrong or you know uh, if you're a Cancer, you know, Cancers are the best or, you know, Taurus is the best, right? But every sign has this higher and lower energy. And in all of our charts, we carry all 12 signs of the Zodiac. So even if you are a particular sun sign, Sagittarius is somewhere in your chart. And so it's very important to know how to deal with that Sagittarius energy, even within you. Um, and then also how to handle it during this time of year um, because when the sun is in a particular sign that is the lesson that 
the universe, if you will, is teaching us at that time. And so right now we're all learning the lessons of Sagittarius. And so Sagittarius energy is very aspirational, is very expansive. Um, it's all about what lies ahead. And it's very interesting that it comes at the end of the year at a time when we start thinking about what the new year will bring, what the new year will hold. Now, the sign that comes after Sagittarius, which is Capricorn, is all about, okay, yeah, but you know, what work are we doing, you know, to achieve these goals? You know, <laughs> Capricorn energy is all is very focused and goal oriented and, and thinking about the long term. Whereas Sagittarius energy is more aspirational, is more dreamlike in some kinds of ways, like dreaming about the future aspiring um, and taking even taking risks. So, you know, Capricorn that comes after it is about slow and steady and, you know, um, really planning and all of that kind of stuff. But Sagittarius is, is like, okay, I'm shooting my arrow and I'm going for it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it. I'm not just going to talk about it. I'm going to, you know, immerse myself. I'm going to experience this new level of my life whether i'm ready for it or not whether whether i've prepared for it or not um and so that is kind of the energy that we're all feeling coming out of scorpio and now it's like okay boom i'm ready you know what's next i'm ready let's let's you know that fire energy comes back to us and it kind of reminds me you know have you ever been in a traffic jam like on a highway you know and on a highway you want to drive like 65 70 or more depending on who you are you know miles per hour like you want to just ball out but when there's a uh, a traffic jam or if there's been an accident and that backs up traffic it's like you're kind of like moving so slow and you're ready to you know it's kind of irritating because you want to go super fast and so this mercury retrograde that we just came out of in scorpio season kind of made us feel like that that traffic jam like every time we try to move forward in something there was obstacles a challenge it was something was messing up you know, something didn't go right, just whatever, right? And now that we're out of that and we're in Sagittarius, it's that feeling of just wanting to just put the pedal to the metal and just, all right, finally feeling free enough to just move fast and to move forward. And so, um, and so there's a higher into that. And a lower into that, right? A higher vibration of that, a lower vibration. Like I said, every sign has higher and lower. So, you know, the higher end of that is that it's very aspirational. Sagittarius makes us believe again. Sagittarius season gives us hope. Sagittarius season um, really like what gives the feeling of exploration gives the feeling of being willing to let go of what we know or what we thought we know in order to know something different. And that's why a lot of times, like if you know a Sagittarius person, a Sagittarius sun sign, or somebody who has a lot of Sagittarius placements, like a lot of pla uh, planets in the sign of Sagittarius in their natal chart, you will, if you watch them over a, a long period of time in their lives, they hold, they can, um, be a certain way for a long time and then it's like a light bulb goes off and they change and that change can be very abrupt to those who are experiencing that like if you're close to that person that change can almost almost be offensive to you but for them to remain the same is offensive to be stuck and stagnant um, is to be offensive. And so sometimes, you know, Sagittarius people or um, all of us, um, when we are operating in our Sagittarius energy, just feels the need to expand. We don't know what that expansion is, but it's almost like, you know, we have to clip our, not clip our wings, is that what it, no, you clip your wings when you don't want them to fly. Whatever it is, spread your wings. <laughs> We have to uh, spread our wings and fly and experience something new, travel, learn something new, um, immerse ourselves in a new study, um, perhaps even join a new religion, you know what I mean? Or, or learn a new um, philosophy because Sagittarius is the sign of the philosopher even. And so, um, it's, you know, so that energy is always trying to expand, it's always challenging us to expand. So no matter what sun sign you are, this is a, a great time to expand yourself, 
to learn something new, learn about a new culture, try learning a new language, um, or the things that you've been um, limiting yourself on or saying I can't do, or maybe I'll do in 2020, or maybe I'll try, like, no, Sagittarius season is about, no, it's time to start experimenting <laughs> and, and trying it. And even Sagittarius energy, sometimes we'll experiment and things that maybe aren't even that helpful. And this is where you have to know the higher or lower end because Sagittarius energy in an effort to learn because Sagittarius again is the philosopher, is the explorer, is the one who needs to learn, you know? And so sometimes we can immerse ourselves in things that were unnecessary <laughs> in, a, in, in the name of trying to learn and grow and expand. So always, you know, use wisdom with whatever you do. But um, Sagittarius season really is a time where we are coming out of our shells. Um, Sagittarius is a fire sign. So it is in, you know, in line with the other fire signs such as Aries and um, Leo. So Aries is the first fire sign. And Aries is ambitious and um, it's all about opening the way and clearing the way and clearing the path and, you know, taking those initial risks to step out there and, and it's all about motivation and drive and ambition um, and then the second fire sign is Leo and so Leo energy is very self-focused it's about but also allowing your inner um, light to shine meaning to exert your will into the world and, and allowing yourself to rise and to shine like the Sun right and then, so then the final fire sign of the zodiac is Sagittarius. And Sagittarius, you know, is about um, blazing a new trail as far as, you know, it's not like the Aries energy, which is about motivation and ambition. It's blazing a trail to learn. It's, it's blazing a trail to be um, explorative, to try new things, to seek the truth. Because Sagittarius energy is very much like that that um, I'm getting, it's like I'm getting an image of like a wanderer, um, that person who just goes out into the world um, and is motivated by the truth, motivated by discovering um, what is, what is truth? You know, <laughs> what is, you know, what is the philosophy by which I will live my life? So on the surface, sometimes Sagittarius energy doesn't appear as fire-like, but you really feel it when those abrupt changes occur when when the truth changes for them when um or you you know or me you know wherever sagittarius is for us um it's all about going higher and higher and throw and discarding what no longer fits you know that's why i followed scorpio because scorpio was definitely about shedding and um going deep to shed and now uh sagittarius teaches us how to ascend to our next higher truth and discarding what we no longer need or no longer think we need, right? Um, and so um, all of them, uh, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius are what motivate us. And so Sagittarius is what really motivates us to seek um, the truth. And sometimes that requires exploration, trying new things, even trying, you know, um, you know, what is love is one of those questions that a lot of the Sagittarius energy ask or people who are sun sign Sagittarius sometimes teach us like they will, they're more willing to even explore what love really is. And um, because the idea is you can't know what is the truth until you try everything, <laughs> right? And so, um, or you can't know what is the true path unless you immerse yourself in every religion. Or you can't know what is the truth um, academically if you don't allow yourself to learn all that there is to know. And truth is ever evolving. Truth, We're always growing, 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 growing in truth. And so that's what Sagittarius um, energy teaches us. One word that kept coming up to me, I kept, I've said it a couple of times. I'm going to slide this over. This is... It's like my arm is like, I can't. Okay, anyway. Um, word that kept coming to me over the past days, days, like I've said it a couple of times and then I've even um, seen it, like written or heard somebody else say it a couple of times was paradigm or paradigm 
shift and we know like a paradigm is like the way let me look up the actual definition because i want to say it right but you know paradigm is a lot of times um you know how we see things and and um <clears throat> yes yeah, as a typical example or a pattern of something a model so it's like a, a pattern a static uh way of doing things and when we are all viewing things from a specific paradigm we don't think that there's another way of saying it for example if you um let's just say you follow a particular religion right and you were brought up in that religion and your mom was in that religion your grandma your grandfather were in that religion and so on back and then you learn something so so your paradigm is basically how that religion was passed down to you or you know let's just say um your family celebrates a particular holiday for example like christmas and so for you um if, if your mama put up a christmas tree and your, your grandparents put up a christmas tree and aunties put up a christmas tree you know for you it's not christmas until you get a christmas tree <laughs> right um i'll never forget this story my mom reminds me of this every so often but um when i was younger i associated the birthday cake with a birthday and i think it was like one year it was her birthday and she hadn't gotten her cake yet or whatever the situation was and i was and she was trying to explain to me i was like, however old at the time and she was trying to explain to me that you know she was like you know tanya it's my birthday and i'm like it can't be your birthday because there's no cake you know if there's no cake then it can't be your birthday whatever age i was at the time i had not understood that <laughs> the day was our birthday it had nothing to do with the cake or not but you know so basically when we have a certain paradigm and not all paradigms are, are bad or negative but when we have a certain paradigm that is how we view the world that is how we see the world that is how or how we view that particular thing right and so for example you may have a paradigm that um in order to be successful um you have to have a long-term career like you have to be work wor um maneuvering up the social the the corporate ladder right um so then the paradigm shift happens when you discover you meet somebody who let's just say became very successful without going through corporate you know what i mean or somebody who celebrated christmas but didn't have a tree that year or you know um you you learn about somebody from a different religious background and how their lives were perfectly fine they ha they have their own traditions and their own prayers and their own everything that look completely different from yours and so then that broadens your horizons that broadens your perspective of what religion means what it means to uh celebrate christmas what it <laughs> means since i'm using that as an example um what it means to even be successful um and so it changes your viewpoint and it's not to say that any of these like i said before it's not to say that any of those examples i use are good or bad but it's just you know um sagittarius season teaches us that we all have paradigms that we view the world through and those certain patterns that we say this is what it means to um, be a person of faith this is what it means to celebrate a holiday this is what it means to be successful this is what it means to be a woman this is what it means to be a man this is what it means to be a mother or a father or you know um you know and then sagittarius season says wait a minute there can be a paradigm shift you can really change your perspective and change your views and the only way to change certain things or really it, it, and change doesn't necessarily happen intentionally a lot of times the change happens because life happens you get around people who are not like you you get around people who practice other religions you get around people who speak different languages or have different holidays or you meet someone who um uh maybe you, in your mind your paradigm was that um i'm gonna do the opposite of what y'all might think i might do, well what i was gonna go with is that you know if you're a single parent um you, you can't be successful um or that or excuse me let me say it like this because that is the typical paradigm that um 
let's just say you've had generations of single parenting, right? And so that has become your 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 paradigm that you don't necessarily need a partner because you've seen it done without a partner. Until let's just say you see a a relationship where there are two people, a partnership, whether a husband or wife or just a a partnership raising their children, and you're like, wow, you know, um, I I didn't even know. It's funny. I was watching a show Blackish recently. It was like a old, a rerun, and the main character was reflecting back on his childhood. Andre was reflecting back on his childhood, and he was going through this period where he wasn't really liking his dad you know his dad he was saying his dad wasn't there his dad wasn't the best father x y and z and then he's reflecting back on his childhood and he's remembering a time when he had a friend over and the friend saw his dad in the house and the friend was like who is that guy and andre was like that's my dad and the friend was like you got a dad like you got a dad that lives with you like that was a paradigm shift for that kid because in his household he had never seen a father right so that's a paradigm shift sometimes we have to get around people whose lives are different from from ours um to see to expand our view and sagittarius is all about expansion all about growth and and allowing us allowing yourself to have new and different experiences so that you can grow because you can't grow in a box and it doesn't mean that you know once you have those new experiences that you will just throw everything away from the past and just change you may still choose to um, um, hold on to the paradigm that you've always had but at least you are now making a more conscious decision and so that's what Sagittarius season um, is teaching us all um, uh, to not be a prisoner of the past and to actually come out of Scorpio so Scorpio season allowed things to die that no longer um, fit us so that now Sagittarius energy is almost like being born again be, being renewed um, um, coming into a deeper understanding of who you are what you want how you want to grow and as long as you're in a box it's very hard for you to grow and expand and so that is the lesson that Sagittarius season is teaching us all at this time all right so we're going to move forward into our oracle reading bam I'm gonna pull two cards actually um on what we almost need to know. Ooh, my card flew out. Uh, what we most need to know, do or be aware of for Sagittarius season. What wisdom and guidance is there for us all, no matter what our sun signs are. You know, what wisdom and guidance do we almost need to know, do and be aware of uh, for Sagittarius season in order for us to all grow and expand and move closer to uh our higher our higher selves all right so what was in the guidance is there for us one second all right so huh all right so i'm gonna show you this card in just one second well i'll show it now it's the ace of swords and i'm gonna pull an oracle card so what wisdom i asked the same question what wisdom and guidance is there for all of us um the sagittarius season what do we almost need to know do and be aware of for sagittarius season i was going to shuffle these cards ahead of time and already have the cards ready but i don't do that on my pick a card readings and i kind of wanted y'all to see wow oh excuse me um <laughs> I'm gonna keep that card out and I'm gonna pull another one as well. I kind of wanted y'all to see the process of what goes into it. So, okay. One second. All right, here we go, y'all. Yep. Hmm. All right. So, we have the Ace of Swords. That light is so bright, so I'm sorry. Um, and then we, this card came out, and I don't always keep cards that fly out, because sometimes just the way you shuffle, y'all. Every card that fly out ain't trying to tell you something, but I felt like I should keep this one. So um, this one is, to be fair, this is the one that came out. 
and then this is the one that I pulled, which is Breathe. So, um, for uh, these two, I will read the message that comes with them. Um, but let's talk about this for a second. The Ace of Swords is like um, that aha moment. Um, it's funny that we talked about uh, Sagittarius energy being very expansive. It's, it's about newness. It's about coming, um, allowing our wings to fly, uh, allowing our wings to spread so that we can fly. And it's about coming into new awarenesses and shifting our paradigm, our mental paradigm, so that we can um, go to our next level. So the Ace of Swords is really a card of... Um, aha moments like a new awareness um and so this this Sagittarius season we are all being challenged to allow our minds to expand <laughs> to take some time to learn something new and really the ace of swords is a card of like I said those aha moments so it's not even necessarily about reading new books or intentionally putting yourself in new learning environments it's about when when you learn something new to don't just shake it off and say oh, I ain't paying attention to that like when somebody when you hear a new word about something when somebody expresses something to you or it could be really in passing um, because that's how aha moments happen you know in passing right it's like a new awareness or somebody says something that kind of opens your mind right you have two options you can hear the new information and say oh that does not fit with my paradigm so i'm not even going to even pay attention to that or option number two you can hear the new information and um allow that to cha challenge and change you you know, sit with it for a while. It doesn't mean that you have to, whatever new thing comes or whatever new thing is said, it doesn't mean that you have to, you know, t uh, um, accept it right then, but actually then take that time to explore it a little bit more. So if somebody teaches you something new or somebody says something new, instead of instantly rejecting it and saying, well, that's not how I do it or that's not how, that ain't what I learned, you know, actually allow yourself to say, okay, well, is there something in that that I should take um, or can I go deeper with what I just learned and discovered is there something is there something I can go deeper with that on so that I can have a better understanding Sagittarius energy on its higher end is very tolerant on its lower end is intolerant and so this is saying ace of swords um, if something new comes to you that you have never heard of don't know or you just want to say oh that don't mean nothing it means something you know, so um, instead of being intolerant about whatever new information you learn or new concepts you hear about or whatever, instead of just um, belittling it, actually say, well, maybe there's something there for me to learn. Maybe maybe I just need to expand my my view. Maybe I need to be more tolerant and more understanding. Um, and so that is the wisdom that is coming to us from there. And then we got the card to be fair. And so this card, I will read what that says. Um, to be fair is balance, justice, a need to consider options, mutual benefit, the law of cause and effect. Life offers experiences that are challenging and experiences that are nourishing. Yet over time, they strike a balance. You move from being, from stasis, to doing, from discovering, to loving to letting go to being again life is a pendulum swinging between all of these states you will always oscillate back and forth between doing and being if you are not content with where you are at this moment remember that all experiences have their place accept them without judgment and you will see how the universe adjusts in perfect balance you reap what you sow for every cause there is an effect wondrous things will be revealed now so if i had to put these two cards together to be fair with the ace of swords remember the ace of swords right now is telling us to be tolerant to be open to be balanced to be just in our even in how we view the world um to come out of our our tight paradigms and understand that there are people who live outside of the paradigms that we've set for ourselves um, but also what it uh, to be fair said that 
Um, remember, all experiences have their place. And um, um, life is a pendulum swinging between all, all of our states. And so, you know, there there's a time to where we are learning. There's a time where we are receiving. There's a time where we are growing and expanding. And so we have to be fair with that. We can't just... When we're so holding tight to our paradigms, we're not fair to the growth that is trying to come to us. And then what also came out is the card breathe. And breathe says, one second, let's see. Patience, waiting, going slowly, wellness, meditation, and trust. Patience in all things is called for right now. What do you need to do when you're in a rush? Slow down, of course. Meditate and trust. Breathe and repeat. Humans cannot exist without drawing breath. Now is the time to allow the life-giving element of air to replenish your body, your being, and your very essence. Stop to smell the roses. Breathe in the sunlight and release the darkness and miracles will appear. So basically, you know, when I look at these three cards here, we have the Ace of Swords, To Be Fair and Breathe. Wow, and I really wasn't expecting this for Sagittarius season, but it kind of does make sense. You know, again, that Ace of Swords is telling us to be open to the aha moments, be open to learn something new. You know, be, you know, allow ourselves to come out of our boxes and to, you know, allow our paradigms to shift a little bit. Because especially if you, if you, you know, have these goals and these aspirations for 2020, you know, how can you go to your next level thinking and being and doing and functioning in your old paradigm, right? So this, you know, just a, perhaps that's a way of helping you to to um, understand that and to receive that better. And then, you know, it's followed by, you know, being fair. And so that's being balanced and being um, non-judgmental and not saying, well, I don't do things like that. And it's funny because I even saw something earlier today that um, is helpful to me. And when I was first hearing the the man who was talking about, you know, something that you can do in your business and and at first I was like, well, that's not how I did it, you know. This particular person is doing extraordinarily well in their business. So it's at least worth uh well, I like I had a gap there. Okay, y'all. Y'all know how I do. So the shenanigans sometimes got to show up in my videos. Anyway, <laughs> um um even if even if it doesn't work for my business it's worth listening to him and giving it a try you know like why am i being so close my life mm, that ain't how i've done it you know but maybe i could do things be more successful in that particular area of you know my work you know just by implementing some of his strategies but my mind went straight to the old paradigm right and so you know watch out for those moments this season when your mind when you are tempted to go back to your old paradigm and go back to this is how I've always done it because how you've always done it will keep you where you've always been and Sagittarius energy again with that centaur you know what I mean with the arrow uh, going forward is all about but how can we move forward you know um, how you know it's all about you know you're not there yet right when you're this if you're the the one holding the arrow you're not where you want to be yet but you're shooting your arrow you know for where you want to be you already have your sight on where you're going you can't do that holding on to the old paradigm and then it's you know followed by to be fair um, which is all about, you know, being balanced, being non-judgmental, you know, um, don't just shoot down the new things that you hear. And then that's followed by breathe, which is b being patient, and allowing yourself to meditate, which I really feel if I even had to just put these two cards together, you know, the Ace of Swords with breathe. It's like, you know, when you do hear or learn about something new, don't, you know, again, don't be so quick to judge it or say what, what will and what won't work. Just breathe. Just take, you know, you don't have to uh, fully agree or disagree agree just take some time to even study what you what you've learned or meditate on it or pray about it you know whatever method works for you um so that you can make it work for you right so um so that is our oracle reading for um for Sagittarius season I hope that you all utilize this wisdom and this energy uh or this guidance and wisdom that has come forth at this time um now 
I mentioned in my announcements that I have my pick a card readings and so um, every week on Sunday you, we do the pick a card where you pick your wisdom and guidance um, for the week and that's kind of what that kind of looks like sort of not really well yeah it is you know you 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 select your cards and then I talk about it um, in another video I, I give the wisdom for uh, those cards and so um, so anyway so that's the, the the wisdom for our entire Sagittarius season no matter what sign you are all right y'all mm -mm 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 -mm. let's talk about Sagittarius through the signs from A to P Aries to Pisces what do you need to know I need to come up with a theme song for this segment of the program, y'all. Because when I get to this point, I it's about to be like rolling, rolling, rolling. So we are going to talk about Sagittarius through all of the signs. If you are an Aries, what do you need to know? If you're a Taurus, what do you need to know? If you're a Gemini, what do you need to know? If you're a Cancer, what do you need to know? If you're a Le All right, slowing down. Y'all get it. You know, what wisdom and guidance is there for you? For Sagittarius season, I believe Sagittarius season ends December 21st. So what do you most need to know, do, and be aware of from now through December 21st, all of Sagittarius season? And it's very important that you listen and take what is for you. Um, but seriously, y'all, the, because the signs build upon each other. So if you want a successful Capricorn season, the sign that takes us into 2020, right, that is built upon a successful Sagittarius season. So what do you all most need to know, do, and be aware of this Sagittarius season? So we're going to jump this thing off. We're going to start with Aries. Hi, Aries. Hi, my beautiful Arians, Aries people. Sun sign Aries. Sagittarius rules your ninth house. So the ninth house um, is all about, is, ooh, the ninth house um, is Sagittarius's house. Like it's the house that Sagittarius naturally rules. Okay, y'all. So with you being an Aries um, and in general, you know, unless I look at your specific chart, but you can book an, a magic of me intuitive natal chart reading. Um, uh, you know, for in general, Sagittarius rules the ninth house for Aries sun signs. And the ninth house is all about growth, expansion. Everything I said in this video, growth, expansion, paradigm shifts, come out of your boxes and expand and spread your wings and learn something new and explore, right? And so, and Sagittarius is your brother, sister sign, you know, it's, a, it's another fire sign. So this is a great time for all of you Aries sun signs to learn something new, to try something new, to explore, get around people who are not like you. And, you know, in general, the Aries energy gives you that, that, um, those of you, those of you who really tap into your own Aries energy, you know, can be very motivated and, um, can, can really, um, if you're not always second guessing yourself, you can really be someone who is willing to try something new, who's really willing to step out there on faith, who's willing to put yourself out there, you know? And so Sagittarius season actually helps you to do that on a deeper level, to go deeper into, um, even your, 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 your personal philosophy. I'm, I don't want to just say spiritual beliefs, but your personal philosophy. What is your philosophy on life? What does life mean to you? What is the meaning of life to you? And are you living up to that meaning of life? So if you say life means this to me, or love means this to me, or faith means this to me, this is the time for you to explore how you are actually living what you say you believe and what you say your philosophy on life is. And so don't be afraid to explore. Don't be afraid to ask yourself the deeper questions and to actually, you know, try things out a bit. And Sagittarius likes to have fun too. And so just do something new. I mean, even it's funny. Uh, it's like I even see like... You know, you can take a dance class that is, let's just say you wanted to learn salsa dancing and you've never done it before and you don't know anybody who salsa dances and you don't even know anybody from the cultural background where salsa dancing came from. Go to a salsa dancing class and you will learn so much just through that element of dance. It will teach you so much about yourself and you'll gain confidence and strength 
um, through doing that. All right, so Taurus, hey, Taurians, Taurus, sun signs. Sagittarius rules your eighth house. In the eighth house, ooh, is a house of depth and um, intimacy and going deep and going into your, um, your even your secrets, your deepest, darkest secrets. I mean, good or bad, but just the things that, you know, everybody doesn't know about you and learning how to even connect on an intimate level, learning how to be vulnerable on an intimate level, right? So with Sagittarius being there, oh, some of y'all, this might be a good time to mm, explore new ways of being intimate and, and vulnerable, which might be kind of difficult for some of you. If you are a traditional Taurus who likes to know everything and wants to be in your whatever your safe zone is and you don't want to explore or, or, or allow people in to see certain sides of you, this might be a good time. Look, we're going into 2020, okay? So if there's a way in your life where you need to break free, Sagittarius season is, is giving you permission to do that. If there's something, like even I feel like maybe some of you maybe have, um, I don't want to say secrets, because sometimes secrets sounds like a bad thing and I don't mean it in a in a negative way but you may have secret desires because the eighth house rules your desires secret desires secret wants secret ways of doing things that you don't want all your friends to know or your family you know because you don't want them to to judge you or you don't want them to view you in a certain way but Sagittarius energy don't give a damn about being judged Sagittarius energy you remember we talked about that paradigm shift go back and watch the first half of this video we talked about that paradigm shift and when Sagittarius energy is ready for that paradigm shift it does not care who what has a feeling about it it don't care what do we say in our oracle reading to be judged I mean to be fair it doesn't so it's fair it doesn't think about being judged and so this is your time to not care about being judged but to be all of you to allow all of you to show up um, without the concern of just being, you know, how is everybody going to think about it? You know, is this going to be offensive? Whatever, whatever. Because in order for you to grow into your full self, you have to be accept all of who you are, right? You have to accept the fullness of who you are and the beauty of who, who you are. And those who love you, they'll accept you too. All right. So Gemini, Gemini. Hi, Geminis. How are you all? So Sagittarius rules your seventh house. And so the seventh house, ooh, and Sagittarius is your opposite sign. So if you go back and watch the beginning of this video, I talked about, you know, Sagittarius likes to go explore and learn new things. And Gemini energy also likes to learn new things, but Gemini is faster with it. So for example, Gemini is like, not to say y'all can't be deep. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying Gemini energy is fast, more fast paced. So Gemini is like, okay, give me the bullet points. Tell me what I need to know. Give me the highlights so we can move forward. Where Sagittarius is like, okay, give me the bullet points. Now let me explore them all. Now let me like research. Now let me, you know. So Sagittarius energy is like a deeper, more explorative version of you so Sagittarius rules your seventh house and the seventh house is all about um partnerships and one-to-one -one partnerships so like you and your you know your spouse you your boyfriend girlfriend you and just you know any partner anytime you're relating to another person on a one-on-one -on -one basis and sometimes people don't talk about this with the seventh house but sometimes you know i like to also say like if you have one child or um, you are, um, maybe you have more than one child, but you know, how you relate to each one of them is a different relationship. That's a one-to-one -one relationship. And so Sagittarius is encouraging you to explore all of your relationships. And because Sagittarius energy is very expensive and explorative and likes to try new things and that paradigm shift, right? If, for example, you're a parent and you're saying, this is what it means to be a parent and my child's just going to have to accept it. 
I mean, I'm not saying don't be a parent. I'm just saying, you know, well, you know, is there a different way that you can, you know, build a relationship with your child, right? You know, what does your child need from you? And what do you need from that relationship? If you're saying this is what a husband wife should be, this is what a, you know, a boyfriend, girlfriend, partnership, whatever should be. Um, well, maybe this is the time to explore that. And even business partnerships, because that's a one-to-one -one partnership. You may be thinking, you know, this is how things have to be. And this may be a time to explore other ways of doing that. As you are exploring, though, understand, because sometimes folk can explore without everybody being on board, right? So make sure you communicate because Gemini energy is about communication. Your sign is about communication. Um, one of That's one of the things about your sign. And so make sure you communicate how you are shifting the paradigm or how you would like you, you and your partner to go, you know, hand in hand in that paradigm shift and how you would like to do things um, together. Maybe y'all can do new things together. Like, you know, uh, go bowling. I don't know. Get on a roller coaster. Go travel to a new place because Sagittarius is the sign of this of the traveler. So Gemini is like short travels and Sagittarius is like long term, deep, you know, explorative travel. So either way, have you that works for you. Travel together, learn new things together, experience life in a new way um, together in your uh, partnerships and in your relationships. And also your sign, Gemini, deals with siblings. So some of you may need to reconnect with your brother or your sister um or maybe because sometimes when when we are when we have siblings we kind of fall back on you know we always gonna be related so you know we gotta do you know we live in our memories like you remember when we were kids and we used to do that you remember when we were little and we used to and it's like are you creating new memories together so this might be a good time to you know build or rebuild those relationships with your siblings or just you know you know spice up those relationships a bit all right so cancer sun sign cancer sagittarius rules your sixth house i don't know why every time when i get to y'all sign i always want to be like cancer oh sun sign cancer and maybe because my daughter is a sun sign cancer so i always feel like oh but and even though y'all are known for the emotional side and feeling y'all cancers now because y'all symbol is the crab so y'all can y'all can <laughs> So I don't know why I'll be like, oh, because y'all ain't as sensitive as y'all be trying to make the world think that some of y'all are. Y'all still got y'all's hard shell. Y'all got some toughness with y'all. So anyway, Sagittarius rules your sixth house. And the sixth house, oh, is all about work ethic and your habits, your daily habits. Like, what do you do um, every single day? Now, these can be lifestyle habits because the, the sixth house does deal with health. It is the house of health. So what are your eating habits? What are your drinking habits? What are you, you know, are you getting enough water? I need to refill my glass. Um, um, you know, um, what are your eating habits? Or, ooh. I don't know why I just felt this, but even um, even though the sixth house isn't really a money house per se, but it is habits. So how are you spending your money and how are you spending your money on your habits? <laughs> you know, are, is you, you know, are you are you properly utilizing your money when it comes to your habits? And even if they're good habits, right? Are you like how much money are you spending on food? Just a question. You ain't gotta, you ain't gotta, I ain't telling you, I ain't judging you. What, what was up with our oracle cards? To be fair, I'm being fair, y'all. I'm being fair. So, what's our other oracle card? So, breathe. Calm down now, breathe. Um, but, you know, what are your habits and how are you utilizing your money towards your habits? So, that's just something to look at. Because it's Sagittarius um, that we're talking about, this might be a, a good time of year for the, in, you know, until the 21st of December. And this is a high spending time to, you know, make sure that your money is actually going where you want it to go. You know what I mean? That is going towards, because the sixth house is all about those little daily habits that over time add up and create a huge, wonderful blessing or huge massive problem 
<laughs> so this would be a good time to look at your habits and learn how your um how your habits are creating the bigger picture because if you go back and watch the big first half of this video and i talked about how sagittarius you know is that centaur he's shooting his arrows to his future so if you know where you want to go if you have a vision on for your future if you keeping your eye on the prize how are your daily habits getting you to that prize and because Sagittarius season is the season of the paradigm shift, what habits of your mind do you have that you need to shift, change, rethink? You know, don't be, I'm pull out our other card. Oh, ciao. So you remember we got the Ace of Swords during our Oracle reading. If you skipped ahead, go back and watch it. Mm -hmm. Make a habit of listening. Anyway, so, <laughs> so the Ace of Swords is all about learning new things and not just shunning it because that's not how you've always done it. That ain't how I do it. So, well, just because it ain't how you doing it now doesn't mean that you can't learn a new way of doing it that's going to set you up lovely for the future, right? So any habits, um, whether they're food, money, um health working out anything you know any habits daily rituals and habits that you need to shift and change so that you can be set up for your breakthrough now's the time to make those paradigm shifts so that you can enter into 2020 powerful strong healthy and your money lining up all right so who's next leo hi leo leo sagittarius rules your fifth house and it's so very interesting if you go back and listen i talked about um earlier in this video i talked about how aries leo and sagittarius y'all all fire signs and so y'all all connected um you'll have some some similar ways of doing things and viewing the world and so with um your 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 fellow fire sign ruling your fifth house um that's a, a strong connection for you during this time the fifth house because i i remember last month's video everybody's a scorpio including you it seemed like y'all got like a harsh i remember thinking like oh these leos ain't gonna like this but i hope y'all listen because each sign builds upon each other so if you did the work in scorpio season now you can play a little bit in sagittarius season because sagittarius rules your fifth house and the fifth house is the sign of play and fun and pleasure all the things that y'all love all the things everybody loves really but fun play pleasure joy joy of life to just enjoy life right um and so that's what the fifth house is all about and so sagittarius being there is encouraging you to reignite that fire that passion of life Put your energy into your creations. You know, your in those creations can be like um, actual things that you create with your hands, or music, or anything that or a portfolio for your accounting job. Whatever you create, whatever you produce, your creations can also be your children. You know, what could, because you created them. <laughs> so with Sagittarius being there, it's, it's giving you the permission to. Um, add more of your passion and your joy um, into your creative endeavors. Also adding passion and joy and excitement into your, your even your sexual um, endeavors. <laughs> to, you know, maybe explore different ways to explore each other, right? You know what I'm saying? I mean, you gotta, what do we say for Sagittarius? It's about the paradigm shift and make sure you go back and watch if you skipped ahead, you just missed a whole lot. So you should, I'm telling you, you got to go back and listen to what I said at the beginning or in the first half of this video when I talked about the paradigm shift and Sagittarius being all about the paradigm shift. And so perhaps your love life has even been in a box and always been a certain way. And you, you, you do everything a certain way. You, you go on dates the same way. You make love the same way. You, you give uh, gifts to your partner the same way. And Sagittarius is like, well, how can we spice this up though? What can we do that's different? Now we don't always have to do this different thing, but what can we do this different? How can we explore this side of ourselves in a new and different way and so sagittarius season is really giving you all that permission to um shift your paradigm 
in um, your relationships, in your pleasure, in your fun, in your creativity. And also, um, as I speak, I know the planets Venus and Jupiter are kind of aligning in the sky. Um, I need to look at my chart to see how long that's going to be happening. But um, Jupiter is is Sagittarius's planet. It's, it's the planet of expansion and blessings and whatnot. And Venus is the planet of love and attraction. So how can you assist those two planets in bringing that growth and expansion and blessings and good luck and good fortune into your love relationships or even just into your life in general in doing what you love and in creating in a way that is more pleasurable and more lovely for you. This is the time to welcome that into your life. All right, so Virgo, 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 you are next and Sagittarius rules your fourth house and the fourth house Hmm, is the house of the house. <laughs> the fourth house is the place that represents your, your literal home. Where do you live, you know, and who lives in your home with you? Um, it's the place where, you know, your home naturally should be the place where you feel most comfortable. It should be a safe haven. It should be, you know, where you take off everything that you wore out in the world and you get comfortable and, you know, um, it's the, it's, there should hopefully be good food in your home and loving people in your home and plush comfy pillows in your home that you can lounge on and all that kind of stuff with Sagittarius being there. And I'm saying all this because Sagittarius, again, is all about um, exploration and um, um, allowing yourself to have new experiences and allowing yourself to really expand and to grow. And so your home this season actually can be the place Hmm, can actually be the place where you experience the most personal growth, right? And so you may not you may not find that the most personal growth um, will necessarily come outside of the home. I'm not telling you not to leave the home or not to have expansive experiences. What do we say in our oracle reading? Those aha moments. You got to be around other people to have aha moments sometimes. Sometimes, um, but um, you know, it's almost like I'm seeing like. You know, um, Sagittarius season for a lot of Virgos might be similar to Scorpio season. Now, don't get scared because I know this Scorpio season we just came out of, especially because it was a Mercury retrograde, was like for a lot of people. But what I mean by that is that Scorpio energy in general um, is very... In, uh, it causes you to go inward and go deep and things like that. And so even though now we're in Sagittarius season, because Sagittarius is ruling the fourth house for Virgos, this might be a time where we, we uh, those of you who are Virgo, I'm saying we because I'm a sun sign Virgo. I ain't even trying to say that right now. But anyway, so where we might find the most growth um, within our homes. But also the fourth house just means your where you find comfort. So this might be a good time to be around, you know, the people um, who nurture you and love you um, like home. But I'm also feeling because Sagittarius is a very expansive energy and it's about those that growth and expansion. Um, this might actually be a time for some of you to come out of your comfort zone. So, you know, what you think home should look like, maybe it's time to change that up. You know, bring, uh, bring, um, even bring items of good luck and good fortune into your home because Sagittarius being ruled by the planet Jupiter and Jupiter is the planet of good luck and good fortune and expansion and all that. And Jupiter is doing some wonderful things right now in December, so uh, late November, December. So, um, this might be a time, I don't know why in my mind it's like, I'm seeing, uh, what are those, um, those money trees, like they're like bamboo and stuff. That might be a good time to bring something like that into your home, to bring things into your home to, oh yes, um, to bring elements of good fortune to surround your home. Oh y'all, I'm gonna be doing this. Y'all get ready. And I wanna hear some Virgo testimonials. Um, to bring items of good fortune into your home. And it's not about just bringing them into your home and just sitting there and seeing if good luck happens. It's about aligning yourself to them, you know, to get comfortable with, 
Oh, Virgos, get comfortable with allowing good luck, good fortune, good opportunities to come to you. Be open to that. You know, the fourth house being your comfort zone. So get comfortable with blessings. You know, don't think that life always has to be hard, you know, or even make your home a, a space of blessing so that even if what you're dealing with in the outside world is challenging or you just got deadlines coming, it's the end of the year, whatever, whatever. But when you come home, you actually enter a space that visibly looks like a space of blessing. Set up um, a green plants and things in your home. Also, a lot of the symbols for Christmas, um, whether you celebrate Christmas or not, a lot of the symbols for Christmas are really actually connected to good luck and good fortune. So like the pine tree, the, their, their evergreen trees, and those were symbols um, in almost every indigenous culture um, for continual wealth and continual blessing, you know, that it never dies, right? And so even if you got to buy one of those little miniature Christmas trees, you know, there's like this big, you know, as a, as a symbol of, of wealth and just deck it up with lots of gold and silver and just, um, I'm not telling you necessarily do anything that's outside of your, your faith, but just put yourself in the mindset of abundance and wealth and let that be your home. Let that be the place where you feel most comfortable. Like really set that vibe and energy in your home. Wow, I talked a long time for Virgo. All right, so I hope that y'all heard me and y'all listened. All right, so boom, who's next? Hi, Libras. Libra, Libra, Libra. Sagittarius rules your third house. And the third house is all about communication. Uh, communication, writing, speaking, um, emailing, videos, whatever. However you express yourself to others. Um, it's also about um, travel, but not a whole lot of big travel, but some short travel. Um, third house is also about your siblings, you know, your brothers, your sisters, you know what I mean? Those who you were uh, raised with. Excuse me. So with Sagittarius ruling your third house, this is a great time to, hmm, I don't know why it's like I just felt like, you know, you only speak what you know, right? The third house being communication, right? So you can only speak, think, um, write, whatever, based on what's in your head, based on what you know. And you will only be able to speak on what you know. But what do we say? If you go back and listen to the Oracle reading that we had um, at the early on in this video, um, I talked about the Ace of Swords. Oh, the Ace of Swords card is really such a card of communication. The Swords is mental energy, your logic, your thinking. I really feel like many of you uh, Libras, this is a great time to expand your knowledge base, to expand what you know, to expand, you know, um, what you adhere your life to like what your life what the hmm, what am i trying to say the, the the pillars upon which you set your life right um expand that this is the time to learn something new and maybe it's your siblings that will teach you right and you might be thinking i have grew up with her i grew up with her. they can't teach me nothing or, or new or they they ain't even doing well in life they can't they can't teach me nothing you can learn from everybody what did our other oracle uh, to be fair, to be non-judgmental, don't judge about where your blessings and your lessons can come from. Your lessons can come from the best, the highest, most learned person in the world, and they can come from the well, the person that the world is says is the lowest doesn't know nothing, you know, the bottom of the barrel person as well. So be open to learning from everybody. And some of these people even may be your siblings. Some of you actually maybe just, this might be a good time to just look at people you know and say, you know what, for 2020, this is where I'm trying to get to in my life. And I'm looking at everybody I know. Okay, I'm taking note on, okay, that person, mm -mm, yeah, no, they can't, no, that person, you know what I mean? So sometimes even your own family can teach you on what to do and what not to do so that you, um, in, as far as moving forward and elevating and expanding, because Sagittarius season is all about expansion, um, about your growth and expansion. I really feel like some of you Libras, um, you may even be the one in your family who shows the rest of your family how to do it. So you can't judge them because 
um, you will be the one who actually ends up being a, a shining light for some of them on, on how to grow, how to expand. But in order to be that shining light, because I know some of y'all Libras, y'all like to, you know, y'all like to shine a little bit, you know what I mean? Um, but in order to do that, you have to expand your own knowledge base and allow yourself to grow, learn, and experience new things and new people and new environments um, in order to level up and to come up. All right, so who's next? Hi, Scorpio. Scorpio, all right. Yes, I had to look at my notes. Y'all, let me show you. I don't know why. Some of you, all right, never mind. Um... Every time I do this and I get to certain signs, certain signs get to see what's going on behind the scenes for whatever reason. I want to say last video, everybody's a Scorpio, including y'all, you, including y'all, including you. Um, I had a glass of wine that I didn't pick up for the entire video until I got to y'all's because Scorpio is about what's going on in the dark, what people can't see. And y'all got to see my glass of wine last time. But anyway, this time y'all get to see my my notes and you see i don't really i don't put um what i'm saying to you all it's really coming uh, intuitively but i just do have a note here to say you know um what is ruling what so i'll pause for a second because i was like did i write that down incorrectly but i didn't scorpio <laughs> sagittarius rules your second house and the second house ooh. It's a house of like money and love. Mm. The second house is the house of values. Like what do you value um, the most in life? And it's a sign and, and because it's a sign uh, or the house of values um, that does relate to money. You know what? Because usually people value money. That's why people work for it. You know, and, and you, you how you spend your money you're careful of because you value it. You know how what it took to get that money. But also your money goes to the things that you value, right? So I can look at your your past your expenditures for the past 30 days or at least for the past 6 months even and say, "Oh, I can I can tell your values based on your money." Woo! So, perhaps that's a task that you all should be doing this Sagittarius season is going back and looking at where has my money gone and discover your values through through that and then ask yourself because Sagittarius is all about growth and expansion how can you elevate in that area of your life so that means having new experiences a lot being oh Sagittarius energy is so open and expansive and it's about learning new things and being around new people and traveling to new places and doing all of these kinds of things how then if you allow yourself to be open and to have these new experiences how do these experiences then shift your core values oh i felt that and then how is it going to change how you receive and release money i don't know what else to say to y'all i talk for a long time on some of these people and i get to y'all and that's it but you know what sometimes the simplest and the sweetest and i'm throwing that to y'all and i'm hoping that y'all scorpios have picked it up and y'all gonna utilize it through Sagittarius season. I would love for y'all to comment down below at some point in time during Sagittarius season and tell me, you know, like, how have you applied this wisdom? Okay, on to the next one. All right, so Sagittarius, Sagittarius, Sag, hi Sagittarius. All right, so Sagittarius, <laughs> for the Sagittarians in general, rules your first house. And the first house, oh, is the house of self-awareness the first house is actually ruled by your fellow fire sign aries so the first house is a great place for y'all um so sagittarius uh ruling the first house the house of i am the house of self-awareness this is the time to ask yourself who am i who really am i who do i say i am <laughs> wow i could really go deep on that one but i'm gonna pull it on in but who do i say i am 
And with Sagittarius, your sign being the sign of expansion, being the sign of, um, in some ways, religion, some ways, but more so like your life philosophy. And sometimes that includes religion. How is your faith, your religion, your philosophy showing up in who you say you are? How is that showing up in your character? How is that showing up in your personality? How does it show up in the ways in which you take action? Because the first house is all about action and um, ambition and drive and motivation and, you know, moving forward. You know, how are you one of them Sagittarians who just philosophize? You philosophizes all the time. We all know them people. I mean, you don't even have to be a Sagittarius to be one of them people. One of them people that, that sound good, sound smart, talking a good game, can go deep with you, can tell you what every book says, what the what the Quran says, what the Bible says, what the what the Rick Vader says, and what the this oracle says, and this this religion and this newspaper and this, you know, can go deep. But then when you look at their lives, it ain't none of that applying in their lives. So they just sound good. They sound deep and smart and sound like they doing big things but really they're not i really hope you're not one of those sagittarians oh my gosh please send me wonderful sagittarians to my page and i love sagittarius i really do i have a lot of good uh, sagittarius friends so um but the, but with sagittarius with um this season you know of ruling your first house this is a time to really do the those checks and balances like really am i living up the philosophy that I like to expound upon and sound deep on or whatever, is that actually showing up in my life and how? And then, because your sign is all about growth and expansion and shifting the paradigm, how can you take that to the next level? So that you enter into 2020, you know, more powerful and really not just talking about it and not just aspiring to be it, but actually embodying all that you say that you are. And that exploration, that self-exploration, because Sagittarius energy is, is about growth, expansion, and exploration, but the first house is about the self, about I am. So that self-expansion and that self-growth and that self um exploration and expansion, how you know uh, uh, how are you going to then do that work now and so that you can embody all of that and not just know about it. And not just experience it and explore it in other people, but exploring all of that greatness within you. So that is what you should be focusing on uh, this Sagittarius season 2019. All right. So happy birthday to all the Sagittarians anyway. Ah. All right. So anyway, who's next? Capricorn. 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 I would say over the past few, everybody's a... Uh, filling the sign, including you videos, y'all have had some really powerful uh, tips that I've been giving you. And so I'm really hoping you paying attention and locking in and working with me here and doing the thing. All right, so Capricorn, Capricorn. Okay, so for my Capricorn, Sagittarius rules your 12th house. And the 12th house is all about your beliefs and faith, religion, yeah. But, you know, um, your, even your imagination and your fantasies and your dreams, right? And so Capricorn, y'all are so, y'all get the reputation of being, you know, that slow and steady uh, wins the race and not being big risk takers. But even when y'all take what looks like to the rest of the world a risk so that y'all can move forward, that came with a lot of thinking, a lot of analyzing, a lot of, you know, pros and cons lists and really you know, um, ca calculating, you know, how is this really going to be good for you in the long term and X, Y, and Z. So with um, Sagittarius, though, ruling your 12th house, it's almost like, you know, Sagittarius, because Sagittarius is that fire sign and it, and it is more of a risk taker. It is more of a coming out of the paradigm. Go back and watch the beginning of this video. Where I talk about the paradigm shift of 2019 that Sagittarius season has given us. But Sagittarius energy is about paradigm shift. It's about coming out of the the what's written in stone because everything ain't written in stone. Hmm. Some things you won't learn, experience, or have until you step out of your comfort zone and step out on faith and see what happens. And so Sagittarius season is really encouraging you to be willing to take more risks, to be 
willing to expand and to explore to learn something new and you might have a blueprint of okay this is my first step and this is my next step and this is my next step and you might think that that is that is what it is but Sagittarius season is saying hey boo some things aren't written down some things aren't written in stone some things you will not know until you step out there and experience them and if you have dreams and a vision and imagination um, of, of things you want to acquire or experience in your life, um, which is the 12th house is all about going into that dream state and that fantasy state, but your Capricorn self might be like, well, okay, let's stop dreaming. Let's get real. Right. But Sagittarius then boom comes back to you and says, no, it's okay to dream. It's okay to fantasize. And this might be helpful to some of you dream, imagine, fantasize, do all of that faith, imaginal, imaginary, work but then create a, a new blueprint and, and a new plan on how to implement um, what you dream and see and imagine in your in your vision you know because you can't uh, 2020 starts off in your sign the sign of Capricorn um, well, you know when we go into the year 2020 is 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 in the sign of Capricorn and so um, this is a good time um, to start thinking about your vision for 2020. And in order to do that, you have to dream, you gotta imagine, you gotta ask yourself, how am I willing to step out on faith? What am I willing to know different or learn different or experience that's different from the paradigm that I've always known so that I can have what I don't yet have? So that is something that you all uh, can be focusing on um, this Sagittarius season. All right, so who is next? Aquarius. Aquarius. All right, so Aquarius, Sagittarius rules your 11th house. And y'all had a pretty harsh message uh, during Everybody's a Scorpio, including you. Not really harsh, but um, it came with a warning of things that might be happening or occurring in your life. So you might be one of the ones who had a very rough Scorpio slash Mercury retrograde period of time. And so now we in Sagittarius. Ooh, you might already be starting to feel that paradigm shift. Oh, and Aquarius energy, because Aquarius is the sign um, of, you know, I know it is the sign of the visionary. So y'all might be coming out of a hard time or a dark time, but this Sagittarius is giving y'all that fire. Uh, y'all Aquarius is giving y'all that fire and that energy to say, okay, let's dust that off. Let's shake that off. All right. Boom. Can't nobody stop me. Let's move forward. How are we going to move forward? And so Sagittarius energy is really, uh, the sign of Sagittarius is really encouraging you to start looking at how are you going to move forward? How are you not going to be held back? How are you not going to let the mistakes of the past or the drama of the past or the missteps or the foolishness or whatever else holds you back how are you going to be on to the next one Sagittarius um ruling the 11th house so the 11th house oh this is exciting because oh gosh I'm so so such an astrologer I get excited over things like this anyway so the 11th house is your house um, the 11th house is the house of Aquarius. It is the house of the all Aquariuses. Um, Aquarius rules the 11th house. It's the house of the visionary. It's the house of the humanitarian. It's the house of the future. It's also the house of your your community um, and your social networks. And so with Sagittarius being there, um, this is a time for all of you Aquari Aquarians to perhaps expand your social network. Perhaps the people you thought was gonna roll with you in 2020, perhaps the people you thought was gonna roll with you on that vision that you had, they might not be the ones. So you have to expand your social networks. You have to expand your network if you're trying to uh, up your net worth, right? You have to expand, you have to get around um, maybe people who are doing business at a higher level than you, people who are creating and innovating because Aquarius is the sign of the innovator. So um, you may have to get around people who are innovating, who are thinking different, who are thinking bigger, who are thinking more broadly um, so that you can move to the next level. And then your community, your current social network, those who are meant to continue to walk with you, who are continue, who are meant to, you know, um, to to be partners with you going forward they'll either get on board they'll get on board and those who aren't meant to then it was we had a good run for 2019 
you know, <laughs> we can still be friends, but you know, we're just doing things. Uh, this might be where we part ways as far as how we are growing and expanding. So, um, because with you being a sun sign Aquarius and with uh, Sagittarius ruling your 11th house, which is Aquarius's house, you know, you got to really look at how your the people and the networks and the community that you surround yourself with. Are they helping to propel you to your next level or propel you to your 2020 vision for yourself? Or are they going to keep you stuck in the 2019 vibe? Right. So this is a time to get around different social groups, social networks, just be around people who know what you don't know. Right. And, and expand and start including those people who, you know, who have a similar mind as you and a similar vision so that y'all can so that you so that you don't be stagnant because Aquarius and Sagittarius can't stand to be stagnant. And so you're coming out of a period of stagnation and going into a period of growth and elevation. In order to do that, you, you've got to even expand your social network. So I, I'm excited about that. And comment down below, you know, how that um, works out for you. All right. So, um, so Pisces. Hi, Pisces. Pisces, Pisces, Pisces. Sagittarius <laughs> rules your 10th house. The 10th house is all about um, career advancement. It is all about climbing up. It is all about um, the 10th house is all about your reputation, right? It's all about um, delayed gratification, you know, doing the work now so that you can elevate. It's all about the long-term goals, right? And so Sagittarius ruling your, your 10th house, the house of long-term goals and your reputation, because that's a long-term goal. Nobody builds a reputation overnight. Build a re reputation over time time right and so um and your career goals and even your money goals Sagittarius is telling you you know again go back and watch the beginning of this video because I talk about the paradigm shift and Sagittarius is encouraging you to shift your paradigm and because Pisces is the sign of um faith and your imagination and a lot of you of it maybe are very creative or very dreamy or very um fantastical right so sagittarius is like okay um but we're in your 10th house so how can we pull your vision and your imagination and your dreams into concrete long-term goals that manifest for you so that might require a paradigm shift and that paradigm shift may mean you can't <laughs> I don't want to say you can't just dream and fantasize all the time because Sagittarius energy does help you to dream and fantasize, but it's also going to help you to learn how to pull those dreams and fantasies into your present reality or into a strategic plan for your long-term goals, right? And so this is a time to really also because we're coming towards the end of the year and a lot of us are starting to think about what we want 2020 to look at we might be getting ready to plan our vision boards or you know our new year's resolutions and so use that fantasy imaginative side of your sign pisces to create your elaborate vision board or to create an elaborate vision for your 2020 um but then actually write down steps at least three steps for each one of your dreams that you can actually begin to implement so that you can actually experience your dreams. So your dreams go beyond just dreams in your head. They become your manifested reality. And so um, this is a great time to do that. And with this being the paradigm shift of Sagittarius season, that may require coming out of your box, coming out of what you've always known, coming out of the way you've always done things. And if all, the way you've always done things has not um, set you up for the direction you want to go in, then it's time to shift and change that so that you can be on board um, with reaching those long-term goals and building that strong relationship and creating and building a legacy that you can actually be proud of in the year to come and in the years to come. All right. So that is it for our everybody's a Sagittarius, including you. Oh my God, this video is, is long, but it's so powerful. Those of you who made it through to this point, I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much for watching. 
Thank you so much for commenting. Um, I love to hear how this advice is helping you. Um, so thank you to everyone who's commenting down below. Make sure you click the links down below to book a personal reading, to get my book, The Magic of Self-Love, and to support this channel through a love offering. Um, also share this video with those that you think it can um, bless or be helpful to. Like, subscribe, you know, all that wonderful stuff y'all know y'all should be doing to show your love. Do it for me, please shift your paradigm if you're somebody who just be secretly watching and don't be letting me know or don't want to comment or don't shift your paradigm and comment and share and like and subscribe all right so <laughs> that is it for everybody's a sagittarius including you thank you all so much for watching and i will see you all in everybody's a capricorn next month all right peace and love <laughs>